Hello there, Drew Hanish of Whiskey Lore, and time for a little bit of whiskey tasting, but also a little bit of news. And by the way, if you want a full rant on this bit of news, you can head over to patreon.com slash whiskey lore, sign up, become an insider, and you'll get uh, deeper thoughts from me on this particular press release that I saw yesterday. But it's the, annou the announcement of Claremont Steep. Now, I've known this has been coming for a long time, probably about a year and a half. Um, when I went to Jim Beam and did a tour in January, the place was quiet and I got a nice extended tour and got some insider information while I was doing that tour. And one of the things I heard about was that they were coming out with an American single mall. And I also knew that Jack Daniels was coming out with an American single mall. So I got a chance to taste the Jack Daniels when it came out, and I was not impressed. In the original, now this is when they came out with the Triple Mash, I had the opportunity, a unique opportunity, to taste the deconstruction. And so I tasted the American Single Malt, and it was like, it's very one-dimensional. And Chris said, well, it's bready, but that's all we can get out of barley out of this column still. So, there you go. Now... All of a sudden, they release it, and they've aged it for three years in the old Rosso sherry cask. And I did my reaction video on it, and it was pretty amazing. I mean, it's night and day, the tastes between them. That barrel made all the difference in making that a top-notch whiskey. Now, Claremont Springs comes out, and uh, Claremont Springs, I'm making up a name, aren't I? It's Claremont Steep, uh, a five-year-old liquid distilled in Claremont, Kentucky, Matured in bespoke barrels uh, to deliver warm toffee sweetness on the palate without overshadowing the unique bready taste of American barley. Okay, I'm not excited. <laughs> You've Not only have you insulted the um, American single malt category, which has been around, I'm going to do a tasting on this Stranahan's uh, Snowflake 2020. This edition or these these bottles started coming out around 2008 Stranahan's has been around for a long time they have a 10 year old American single malt they have been around the block and we can look at at like McCarthy's that I've reviewed on here they started in the 80s as an American single malt Westland Balcones uh Town Branch Postmodern's one that I really like that uh, we could throw in there. Virginia. There, there are so many people making American single malt right now. And to start this thing off by saying little to no definition for the American single malt category. Well, guess what? Um, the rules are written. They're just waiting for the final stamp to become law. So it's not like this hasn't been in development for some time. But he's saying that, you know, Freddie Knows decided that he's going to create his own set of defining guidelines, and he made intentional production choices to celebrate the flavor of this single grain. <sighs> Call me not convinced. I, I'm reading the tasting notes on this, and I'm seeing toasted malt, caramel, and toffee on the nose, and I'm seeing vanilla, caramel, and whole grain cereal on the palate which tells me it's one dimensional in terms of the grain, but then they added some dimension of bourbon characteristics with this vanilla and caramel. To me, that is basically making a lower class bourbon. I mean, to me, that's what, I mean, bourbon is going to have rye to give it flavor or wheat, you know, it, then you got the barrel working on it. And so you've got some flavoring grains there. But here you've decided to distill barley in a way to where it's not going to be able to get the flavor dimensions you want. And believe me, you can get flavor out of barley. I've been to Westland. I mean, I've been to um, Waterford in Ireland. I've tasted the variety of farms that they do. I've done the Brooklade experiments on here and tasted three different regions of Scotland and their barley. They're all very different from each other. And so barley does have a flavor, but it has to go through a pot still. So call me not convinced, okay? Call me not convinced and $60 a bottle 
for something that honestly to me sounds more like neutral grain spirit doesn't really excite me. But I will keep an open mind if I ever get to taste it. I just felt that the press release was a little insulting to the category that has been around for a long, long time. It shows a lack of knowledge about this particular part of the industry and it feels opportunist to get into something to make it just because it's out there and it's popular, so let's go ahead and make sure that we make some. And Bourbon Lens was uh, the one that posted this first that I saw the press release and my response to them was that, you know, Beam Suntory, let's hope Freddie got in touch with some of the people at Lafroig or uh, at uh, Glengarry or some of their Japanese contacts and had them help influence this because a whiskey like Legion is a really nice whiskey around $35 a bottle and it is a bourbon, but it has been blended with the skills of a master blender from Japan. So it comes across with a slightly different flavor profile than you would be used to um, over there. And to me, when you have an American single malt, normally there's a fruity character to it. Uh, normally you're gonna pull in, like in a space side scotch, you're gonna get some pear, apple, those kinds of notes coming through. On this Stranahan's, oh, I get so much like Andy's mint on the nose with apple brandy, that apple brandy barrel that they're using for this. Uh, the Moscato brings a little bit of, of a grape note in there as well. Mm. Mm. Wonderful mouthfeel, uh, apple brandy again. Kind of taking front and center with some caramel. It's fruity, it's peppery on the finish. There's a lot of stuff going on in this whiskey that makes you want to dive back in. Oh man, the grape notes that come through there on the end. And then the apple gets a little vinegary towards the end, but still really, really nice. I feel like I just um, had some hot apple cider, actually. It's really, really well done. To hear that a whiskey is going to cost $60 a bottle, which it's going to have to because barley is expensive. That's why American single malts are expensive. But my thing is, if you're going to do something with those, do something special with them. Don't just run them through a column still, put them in a bespoke barrel, whatever that means, and um, come out with a basically what you probably should use as your first aging stage and then put it into something else to give it some character because you have the flavoring grain in bourbon with barley. If you're not going to get that much flavor out of the actual grain, then it's cask selection that's going to make all of the difference. So I'm not spending $60 on this bottle of whiskey. If somebody wants to send it to me, um, in terms of uh, Beam Centauri, go, go ahead. I will taste it. I will taste it with an open mind. Uh, but I will say that I'd probably tone down the, you know, American single malt is not a defined category. And, you know, we are the ones coming in to do that. And we're going to be the ones to uh, make everybody's impression. It, this isn't sounding like a great first impression. We'll find out. And I'd love your feedback. If any of you guys have tasted this or when you taste it, Post something below, because I want to know. And then tell me whether you're a bourbon drinker, or you're a scotch drinker, or you drink both, or you drink a, a Irish whiskey, what your favorite drams usually are, um, so that I can kind of get a sense. Because if enough of you say, wow, this stuff is actually really good, you need to check it out, I will. I will go buy a bottle, 60 bucks. I'll, I'll put it down. But call me extremely skeptical at the moment, same as I was with Jack Daniels when I tasted what was very flat in that initial sampling. But they can do some amazing things and maybe these bespoke barrels are just magic. I don't know, but the tasting notes sound like bourbon-esque notes on top of grain. So we'll see. Anyway, those are my feelings on it. Love this strain of hand snowflake. And um, there are lots of great American single malts out there. Make sure to go check them out and um, 
if you spot a bottle of that Jack Daniels American Single Malt, the one that's the higher proof, and uh, I'm, I live somewhere nearby, send me a message because I, I would love to get another bottle of that. That stuff was really, really nice. And until next time, cheers and salam du bas. Well done.